I just want to thank the cast board and Kevin Yu for putting this together. I, I actually think it's a, so well done. It's probably the best Zoom conference that I've been a part of. Um, and uh, hope to give you some entertainment relief. Uh, we've had great talks this morning, um, but I do want the entertainment relief uh, at the expense of uh, Dr. Sue. So uh, here are my disclosures. Um, and here is my uh, co-debater, Brian Sue. Look how good looking he is. I looked him up on the internet and this is what his Yelp reviews are. 72 five-star Yelp reviews. Now, come on. Like every time I see a restaurant with all five-star reviews, I'm like, no way, there's something wrong here. For Brian, I'm not so sure, but supposedly if you look at the Yelp ratio for every 1,000, this is the medical profession, for every 1,000 contacts, you're supposed to get one Yelp review. This means that Brian has 72,000 contacts. I don't know about that. I think he probably has 72 close relatives living in his area. That, that's, that's my take. So I did find this though. I found young Brian Sue um, and I couldn't believe it. Maybe he does have five-star reviews. This is him. And who knew that Brian Sue was the last airbender? And if you look, Brian, if you really, really look, it was told to you back then. The arrow is already showing you that the anterior approach is far superior. And if you look posteriorly, it was already marked for you by your parents. They said, don't go here. And why? Because it hurts. Okay, now I'm stuck, guys. Oh, here he is. Here's Brian Sue. Okay, so here's the answer already foretold to you. Look, look what's in your hands. These are cervical disc replacements. And this is the answer that you've been looking for. And when I think about doing multi-level treatment, I always think about ease, ease for myself and ease for my patient. And so first, I wanna be efficient. And this is efficient, okay? And guess what? You can have your resident close this and they typically do a great job. If you go posterior, by the time you get this patient set up, I could already be done with my anterior cervical approach. This is just craziness. Another case. And then you have to close it. And I think the closure for the posterior approach is extremely crucial. And if you don't do it right, these patients are going to end up with neck pain. Second is A for anterior arthroplasty. I think that this has changed multi-level treatment. We've already have predecessors that showed that you can use arthroplasty for myelopathy. Here's Lolly Secon. The previous was Dan Rue, a member of CAS. And then finally, safety. If you really, really think about safety, if you look at posterior versus anterior surgery and you look at the instance of C5 palsy, there's about a six-fold increase in C5 palsy with posterior surgery. If you're doing C5 foranotomies, there's a 15% increase of C, of C15% incidence of C5 palsy. And I actually believe this is true. And finally, effectiveness. I think an anterior approach, you can do way better bilateral foranotomies. I think a laminoplasty, it's very difficult if you're trying to do foranotomies. How do you really do that with a laminoplasty? How do you do bilateral foranotomies with a laminoplasty? So let me give you some case examples. So this is a typical case of multi-level treatment. And I think the real issue is, whoops. Okay, well, it's, it's kind of taken over for me. So I, I think the real issue is, is that you want to really avoid a multi-level fusion, you know, because how far are you going to carry this? You're going to do four-level anterior surgery, followed by posterior surgery. I think in these cases, if you told me, I think a laminoplasty is so much better. But the idea is, is not to do this. And what happens with disc replacements, I think it gives you the advantage of treating anterior multi-level disease without doing a four-level fusion. So this is the hybrid approach. This is a patient who has multi-level disease. This is an attorney, actually, um, and he's an avid tennis player. And if you had this patient, how would you treat it? You know, this is the idea. Well, if you're going to treat this anteriorly, you'd probably have to do a four-level fusion and then fuse the C4-5 level that's normal. Now, if you really think about it, how does that make sense? That you have a treatment 
for some reason that's not as good. And then you're going to treat a native normal four or five level with a fusion. And so the idea with a hybrid approach is, is to do the decompression, which has the most effect on your outcome. Okay. Do that well, but don't, don't fuse the patient, provide emotion, and then you can treat level by level. So if the C4-5 level is normal, don't fuse it. And this is an option for this patient. And this patient can go back to playing tennis. Here's another patient, 59-year-old Santa Monica fire chief. Okay, he's got bilateral deltoid weakness. So if you're doing this from posterior, if you're doing this from posterior, you would have to do bilateral posterior foreignotomies. I think that's very complex, okay? Plus, he's gonna have neck pain. So here's a gentleman who would benefit greatly from an anterior approach, certainly easier. You don't wanna fuse four levels. You don't wanna do an anterior posterior surgery, but you do wanna do a very, very good decompression. And so here's an option for you, a hybrid approach, okay? Multi-level anterior decompression, bilateral foreignotomies. You can do a great decompression from anterior and then decrease your biologic demand of the fusion. So don't do a four level fusion because that's pretty difficult. You may have to go in the back, but you can decrease your biological demand and increase your mechanical demand by switching some of those fusions over to an artificial disc replacement. So now you really have a two-level fusion. You can place this patient in the collar. You may not even have to place this patient in the collar. And this patient has decent range of motion and probably restoration of some function. Okay, this is my last case and a little bit different, okay? So this is a previous fusion, okay? So this patient had a fusion 10 years ago, active golfer who's got myelopathy but also has grip strength weakness. So a little bit of a C6 and you can see that the C3-4 has a central stenotic problem, which is probably causing his myelopathy. So he's had a fusion 10 years ago. And obviously, if you're going to treat this anteriorly, how would you do that? And I think your options are obviously to do a fusion. Are you going to do a 3-4 level fusion and a C5-6 fusion and leave the native C4-5 level alone? Probably not. So you probably would end up fusing this patient again at three levels for a total of a four level fusion, giving this patient the net result of a C3 to C7 fusion. So I think these are great examples. So this is kind of a late hybrid where you can actually treat this patient level by level. So leave the C4 level, C4-5 level alone. It's normal, don't treat it. And then place an artificial disc at C3-4 and C5-6 still doing what has the most effect, which is the decompression, right? So you want to do the decompression. That's where your effect is, but don't fuse the patient. So that's my conclusion. Think ease, anterior surgery is most efficient, not only for you, but for the patient. Think anterior arthroplasty in exchange for some of those fusions. So you can decrease the biologic demand of fusion, but you're increasing your mechanical demand. And it does seem that the Midterm to long-term results of arthroplasty are still very good and very durable. I think it's more safe. You don't have to worry about a C5 palsy. You don't have to worry about that posterior neck pain and sunken in syndrome. And then it's very effective. I think an anterior decompression, you can do a better foreignotomy than a foreignotomy with a laminoplasty. Thank you very much. And here's uh, Dr. Sue, the young Dr. Sue, bowing down to my presentation. <laughs> Thanks so much, John.